Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry there was a little delay since the last uh, video on my Reef Berry Pie project. Uh, some things came up, but um, yeah, let's uh, get back into it. So once we have our uh, Raspberry Pi uh, hooked up to our monitor and keyboard and we've got it booted up, you know, powered up, um, we are going to come to the desktop here. So there's a few things that we want to do um, as some initial configuration and setup, uh, and then you know, so that we could start, you know, on our project and, you know, we'll also go over a few, um, of the tools we'll be using. Uh, so when you do set up your, or first start up your Raspberry Pi, um, it's going to look very similar to this. Um, you may have a newer version with a new desktop, um, on it, but all the basics will be here. Um, it'll be generally the same and hopefully I don't forget anything since it's been a while since I've set this one up. Um, but few things you're going to want to do. First, you're going to want to get it onto your network. So if you haven't connected this with an Ethernet cable and you're going to be uh, connecting via Wi-Fi, um, you're going to want to connect to your Wi-Fi now. Uh, so that's very easy to do. You'll see a little icon up in the top right hand corner. That's the Wi-Fi symbol. You'll click on that and you'll just pick the wireless network um, you know, from the list. You'll click on that and just put in your, um, your wireless network password. Click OK and you'll be onto your network and that'll give you, you know, full access to the internet and everything like that. So pretty simple to do. Um, once you are on uh, your network, there's a few other things you're going to want to configure. Um, so we're going to go up to here, this little raspberry menu. This is basically your start menu. Um, click on that. You're going to come down to preferences and then raspberry Pi configuration. Once we open that up, you'll see a lot of other things here. Um, so just to quickly go through some of these, uh, password, you can you know, change your password here. So by default, all new Raspberry Pis come as the user name is Pi, right here, P-I, and then the default password is Raspberry. Uh, so now would be a good time if you wanna change that uh, to do that here. Host name is what the uh, device is going to be identified as on your network. So you could leave this as Raspberry Pi. Um, you could change this to basically whatever you want. This is what it's going to be referred to uh, on the network. Uh, a lot of these other ones you're not going to change. Um, we're going to boot to desktop, meaning you know to the graphical user interface here. Um, we're going to auto log in as Pi. Uh, wait for network. I'm going to leave that unchecked. Um, otherwise, it'll just sit there and hang until it connects to the network. Um, leave these alone. A uh, resolution. Uh, so in here, so if you have this hooked up to your monitor and the resolution isn't utilizing the full screen or if it's you know, set up wrong, you can come in here and change it. Uh, and then overscan, I believe, is used if you do uh, connect this, say, to a television. Um, you may need to enable this overscan because it does connect over HDMI. Um, so you may need to adjust the settings there. Uh, interfaces, we'll come back to in a second. Performance, just leave this alone. Uh, localization, here's where you may need to make some changes. Um, so depending on where you are located, you may want to set your locale. Um, I'm in the United States, so I'm going to leave this all as English and U.S. Uh, time zone is pretty important. You'll probably need to set this. So this is where you'll come in here and set which time zone you're in. This way the clock will be set uh, correctly. It does go out to the internet to a time server to set all of that. Uh, so you can go down there and set that up. Uh, keyboard, you can set your different keyboard configuration. Uh, again, mine is on United States. I don't know why it was on Spanish. I'll keep that on English. And then Wi-Fi, I'm in the United States, so we'll leave that one to where it is. And that's pretty much um, it for uh, the configuration. So say OK there. Uh, one other thing um, that you'll want to... Um, to do so right now we are hooked up uh, with a keyboard mouse and monitor to the raspberry pi and you can work like this just fine uh, but a lot of times we're going to be putting this raspberry pi you know somewhere else maybe it's going to be near our aquarium or you know in a different room or something like that so it may not always be convenient uh, to have a keyboard and mouse and a monitor hooked up to it and we may want to connect uh, to this raspberry pi remotely over our network um, so there are several ways to do that. Uh, 
and two ways that I use are something called SSH, and that will allow me to uh, connect over a terminal session, so basically a text uh, interface uh, to the Raspberry Pi, and you can you know, execute programs that way, check status, uh, certain things, we'll get into that later. Uh, but a much more convenient way is something called VNC, and that will allow us to log into the computer uh, from any one of our other computers, or even an iPad, or an iPhone, uh, or anything like that, and basically see the desktop that we're seeing here. So, in order to do that, uh, you'll want to check that VNC uh, is indeed installed on your machine. So, if you come to Internet and see VNC Viewer, um, you know you're pretty much good to go. Uh, if not, you'll want to do a Google search on how to install uh, VNC Server and Viewer on your machine. Um, but it's probably already there. I think it comes pre-installed on all Raspberry Pis now. Uh, but anyway, so once we have VNC uh, on there, we just check that it's there. Uh, we need to enable the server to make sure that we can connect to it. So that's where we're going to go back into the Raspberry Pi configuration. And we're going to go to the interfaces. So here's where you're going to want to switch this. It would be all, or disabled by default. We would want to enable VNC. This is going to allow us to log in remotely from another computer. Uh, and we'll also want to enable SSH uh, if we want to connect that way as well, because uh, I believe that's also disabled. Uh, so those are two changes you would want to make and click OK. Um, and once that's set, we can uh, log in via another computer, which I will demonstrate right now. Okay, so I'm now on my MacBook Pro, and this could just as easily be your uh, Windows PC. Uh, we're going to need to install VNC Viewer on our computer. Uh, so it's pretty simple. You're going to want to open up your web browser and go to realvnc.com. Uh, once you have the web page open, you're going to, want to click on the download link. Uh, that will take you here. Um, this is prompting you to download VNC Connect, which is the server component. We don't need that right now. That should already be installed on our Raspberry Pi. What we want is VNC Viewer, which is the part that lets us connect to the Raspberry Pi. So I will click on the VNC Viewer uh, button right there. And right here, it asks us to download the VNC uh, Viewer. And we can pick uh, whichever uh, operating system we happen to be on. I'm on Mac OS, so I would download this one. If you're on Windows, that one would be selected, um, and so forth. So I've already got mine installed, but um, so I can skip this step. And once you have it installed, uh, you will just want to run it. And when it comes up, it'll look something like this. Um, we have nothing in here right now because we have not established any connections. Uh, so at this point, I would just go up to File, New Connection. And in here, where it says VNC Server, this is where we're going to type the host name. So if you remember before, it said Raspberry Pi. Uh, as the default, and I left it as that, so I'm just going to type Raspberry Pi in here. And that's the name of the computer, or the Raspberry Pi, uh, as it's identified on my network. If I would have changed that to something else, I would need to type that in here. So I'll go ahead and click OK. I'm going to leave everything else alone. And it adds a new entry right here to my list. So now I do is just double click on that. And it's going to ask me to log in. Um, now remember, the username by default was Pi, so I'm going to need to type that in. So erase whatever was in there uh, that was filled in for us. And then our password, you'll want to type into there. And remember, uh, by default, the password is Raspberry. I'm going to click on Remember Password, so I don't need to type mine in again. And click OK. And here we are, uh, connected to our Raspberry Pi. And let me just get there for now. Um, so yeah, so once I see my desktop here, I can expand this to go full screen if I want. Um, and at this point, it's basically as if I were uh, at the actual keyboard, a mouse, and you know monitor of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I am now logged in remotely, and I now have um, full control of this. So I'm on my laptop. I could be in any room of my house and have full control of the Raspberry Pi desktop which is pretty cool. I find this a lot more convenient uh, for you know, working on this than you know, having to be constantly connected to it in you know, a particular location. Um, so now that we've uh, learned how to you know, set up our Raspberry Pi and get connected to it remotely, 
A um, couple of other things that we're going to want to um, to learn about. You know, I know this is uh, some of the boring stuff, but this is important to know because uh, in the next video we're going to start uh, doing some programming. So I had a sample program open here. So let me show you what we'll be using. Uh, so if we go up into our menu, uh, we'll notice this uh, item here for programming. There's all sorts of different uh, things in here that are pre-installed. Um, but the one that's of most interest uh, for us right now is Python. So when you do start developing in Python, which is the programming language um, that we will be using, uh, you have the choice to either use Python 2 or, or Python 3, uh, pretty much. Um, Python 2 is like the older version of the language. Python 3 is the one which we will be using. Um, and you see that list right here, Python 3 idle. Idle is the... Uh, integrated development environment uh, for Python. So if I click on that, this is going to be the tool um, that we're going to be doing a lot of our programming in uh, or utilizing you know, in our programming efforts. Um, and just to show you as an example, we're just about done with this video here. Uh, and in the next one, we will uh, start learning about the GPIO pins. And I've put together just a sample uh, project that we can do uh, very easily with some LEDs um, and that will be controlled via the uh, GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi and we'll learn how to turn them on, turn them off, just the basics of the GPIO which will be very important uh, for doing pretty much everything else we're going to be doing you know, with this project. Um, so yes, yeah, so hopefully you made it through this uh, this video and I think the next ones are going to be a lot more interesting. Uh, we're going to be you know, really getting into the hardware a lot more from uh, this point forward. And I would recommend, you know, right now, it uh, would be a good time to go out and start learning about Python. You know, go research what it is, you know, a little bit of the programming language, the syntax, because uh, we're going to be starting to get pretty heavy into that in the upcoming videos. So, uh, yeah, with that said, um, I guess we'll cut it off here. I hope you guys are still you know following along and fi finding this interesting and uh, you know if you like the video give it a thumbs up any comments leave them be below and uh, you know be sure to subscribe if you want to see more uh, which I plan to have coming out in the near future so, all right guys I'll uh, catch you in the next one take care